All right, so this is a little different, something new. Usually, we've been talking about Drake, Kendrick, Ice Spice, I think, Sexy Red. You know, it's a lot of like newer people. I mean, it's Drake, Kendrick ain't that new, but a lot of uh, younger group of people. But we have here Dr. Dre, never respected the game, and the reason why. Let's see if it truly is the reason why. I don't know. I didn't even know he didn't respect the game, but it sounds interesting. If the interesting, pop-out concert was so a triumphant like, moment for West Coast rap, that. the exclusion of the game speaks volumes for how far he's fallen in the eyes of his peers and his mentor, Dr. Dre. Okay. Judging game on his antics over the last few years, you could be forgiven for forgetting just how pivotal he was to West Coast rap in the post-death row era. Because back in 2005, the game almost single-handedly resurrected the coast. Five times platinum, critically acclaimed, and Grammy nominated, the game's debut album, the... I'm not gonna cap, bro. Did he really? Was he really that nigga back in the day, bro? I did not know he was like that, bro. Documentary is undoubtedly one of the best hip-hop albums of all time. Essentially, if the mission was to bring LA rap back to the forefront, it was a flawless victory. But things went wrong. Very wrong. And today, it seems the game is a rapper Dr. Dre would rather erase from his legacy. So how does a rapper who was capable of so much musically and culturally end up snubbed and shunned by the man who gave him a shot and launched his career? Let's find out. Signed in 2003 yeah, to a joint venture a with Interscope and Aftermath, Dr. Dre basically equipped the game with every tool to succeed. With a co-sign from Dre, a star-studded feature lineup, and a brief but impactful alliance with 50 Cent and G-Unit, which was actually orchestrated by Dre and Jimmy Iovine, the game's debut album, The Documentary, was destined to be a success, and that's exactly what it went on to become. With the success of the documentary and 50 Cent becoming the most profitable artists in the game at the time, it seemed like Dre's new stable of artists were ready to take over the industry together. But Game's relationship with 50 took a turn, and after a very public beef, Game's departure from G-Unit would put the first major strain on his relationship with Dre. And with so many millions of dollars at stake, Dre had to make a business decision that pretty much sabotaged his work with the game. Financially and infrastructurally, he had to take sides with who Jimmy took sides with, which was 50. It made sense because that's where the bulk of the money was being made. And so at that point, you didn't want to 50 off because he was the breadwinner. Everybody chose sides, but I did the doctor's advocate. No one thought it was coming out. They thought I was done until one night in New York when I recorded One Blood. And I went to Phone Flex and I went to Clue and I went to K-Slay, Angie, and I went to every club, linked up with Jim. He took me to Harlem. We dropped it off in every club. I walked in every club, I bought bottles in every club, and I made one blood crush. So by the time I got back to the West Coast, they were begging me to finish the album. Damn. And that's where me and 50's relationship really went left, because he didn't like the support that I was getting from the building. Proving that he could stand on his own two feet with 2006's The Doctor's for 50, Advocate. Bro, that's, that's some hating ass shit, bro. <laughs> If he ain't liking the support that they're job, bro, I know they, they, but they were beefing though. And you're right, many men, bro, but like, you know, he just, they just beefing, bro. That, that was, a, that's the beef back then, bro. It was like, it was silent, but they, they were, shh. They didn't say nothing about that shit, but it was just them two beefing it out with each other, bro. And they were just like, you know what? It's like, I ain't no fuck with this nigga no more, bro. Like, I'm, I'm leaving. He's like, I'm cool. I ain't, I ain't fucking with him no more. It, which was released just a year after his debut, the game did the near impossible by proving to the world that he could still deliver a stellar album without either Dre's guiding hand or 50 essentially handing him a whole host of hooks on some of the biggest records on the documentary. But behind the scenes, it turns out Dre and the game still had a healthy relationship because by the time 2011's The Red Album released, Game revealed that Dre was still giving him vital feedback. Just because Dre wasn't on the production side of my second and third album doesn't mean that I didn't talk to Dre. Me and Dre had the same relationship. Dre always told me, no matter what happens, no matter what is said in the media, me and you are always going to be the same as we were the last time we had an in-person conversation. Damn, right, because I think in 2010, you posted a picture where you're wearing a bunch of Aftermath chains, and you say, it's funny how things come full circle. Didn't you say you're going back to Aftermath at that point? No, it was basically, that was my ode to Dre, just saying that, like, I'm always going to be aftermath mm, no matter okay. what and for years this was the game's outlook when it came to dr dre no matter how long he went without being officially signed to him, though, huh? game maintained an unwavering loyalty to dre in a way that he's never really exhibited to anybody and even if he admitted that there were some tense moments the gratitude overshadowed it and sometimes dre me off man and sometimes i dre off but that's one of the things dre told me a long time ago me and you are always going to be the way that we left off whatever happens in between all of that. That's I got nothing but love for Dre, man. Everything that he did for me, I'm very appreciative. At times, he even flexed that he could get him on the phone at a moment's notice during interview. But these days, that call would likely ring out. And that's because the game has systematically ruined his ties with the doc and the whole Aftermath family. 
And what's more, this could have all been avoided if he wasn't so controlled by emotion in an industry that requires strategy and thought. So when he only briefly appeared on one track from Dre's Compton LP, some fans did find this a tad bit strange. However, when it was announced that Dre would oversee the Super Bowl halftime show in 2022, it was expected that he'd play a career-spanning set which featured many of the artists he'd mentored. On the big night, he brought out Snoop, Eminem, Anderson Pack, Kendrick Lamar, and a slightly chubby 50 Cent. Meanwhile, the game was left on the sidelines in his own city. To begin with, Game kept it civil and acted like it didn't phase him at all. I ain't had no conversations with nobody regarding Jay-Z and the Super Bowl halftime show he put together. He wrote on IG, I don't feel nowhere about not being included. It was a great show featuring iconic artists. It was a win for the culture and in other- Hold on, bro. So the only thing, like, the only thing with, with these niggas, bro, like, um, The Game and Rick Ross, they just say, like, oh, ain't, I ain't had no conversation with no- Like, did anybody ask this nigga about it? Like, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. You feel me? Like, I'm just asking a general question. I don't understand. It seems like they're interjecting themselves in, into the, the situ situations. You feel me? Like, they weren't invited, and they're like, oh, I didn't get an invite, but it's all it's all good. Like, they just, like, why, are, why even say anything? You know what I mean? It's like, if you weren't heard about it, why'd you say something? But it just seems like you're trying to say something for social media. But, you know, it's, it's whatever. It, it ain't my shit. But, you know, that, that's just my thought to it. It's like, if he didn't care, why say anything at all? But it was a win for the culture, it. and in other interviews, he seemed to try to shift the blame yeah, to Jay as opposed to Dre. You got to look at the Super Bowl, right? Mm. Hove put it together, and so he picked the artist that he thought was fit for the Super Bowl that he was in charge of putting together, right? Mm -hmm. But with everything we know about Game's mindset, it seemed like Damn, only a matter of time broke. until it all spilled out. And finally, he admitted that it got to him. Snoop is an icon. Dre is an icon. M is an icon, but M is not from L.A. 50 is not from LA, and I'm not taking away from the fact that they were on the Super Bowl, but LA wouldn't have been on a Detroit Super Bowl or a New York Super Bowl. It just wouldn't have happened. LA, 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 all around the Super Bowl, and I don't get the call. From that moment on, a switch was flicked. Yeah, and it the hurt, floodgates for were now he open for the game to finally cross the line that he'd never had before, and that was to discredit Dr. Dre. Suddenly, the rapper who had previously written a heartfelt tribute to Dre on his second album was now downplaying Dre's impact on his career and life as if it were nothing. Dre didn't do any beats on a documentary, but I didn't say he didn't oversee it. You want Dre to oversee anything because he's a mastermind when right. it comes to that. But as far as like doing a beat for the documentary, no. And I've never had a Dre beat in my career. I've never had a song with Dre on it and Dre been in my video. Snoop has a ton. M has a ton. I don't have none. Soon, he was claiming that Kanye West, a man who Game had openly beefed with over writing explicit lyrics about Ye's then-wife, Kim Kardashian, had done more for his career than Dre ever did. It's crazy that Ye did more for me in the last two weeks than Dre did for me my whole career. Naturally, the world collectively eye uh, this comment, while hey, man, those who were there firsthand at Aftermath made sure to tell everybody he was out of pocket. When you see Game say, yo, Dre never did nothing for me. I remember Dre being in the studio and giving you them hits, bro. Suddenly doing to Dre what he'd done to so many others before, Game had now disparaged the man who signed him in front of the whole world. And with that, he had come to terms with the fact that one drunken rant cost him his most valued connection in hip hop. And now he's tried to walk it back while trying to save face at the same time. So basically- Nah, he done fucked up with that shit, bro. Oh man. Basically, I was uh, a little inebriated and uh i said some things that i that i meant i'm not gonna take it back i ain't yeah. no sucker but um having dre do anything for your project anything in your career touch any part of anything that you're doing in life is such a blessing that um i shall not um ever on that again and i haven't talked to dre since it don't really matter if we talk again in life like i'm a stand up Compton, LA, and it is what it is. It's just that I should have gave him more grace with what he actually did do, and that was mentor me and do things that nobody else could have done for me in my career. When I was talking on there, I was speaking in terms of what Ye was doing right at that moment, which mm. was life changing for me. Mm -hmm. And then I based it on Dre's lack thereof because I took the business part personal mm -hmm. and uh, I should have left it. Should have left a business, but Dre, Dre is Dre, bro. We know, we all know what Dr. Dre do. In the aftermath, hey, uh, he humbled up, though, bro. You feel me? Like he, he, he apologized. He took it on the chin. He said, "Fuck it, bro." He like, he, he's cool now, bro. Like I, I don't know. I felt like that was pretty respectable.
To the Super Bowl snub, Game has clearly internalized a lot of animosity towards Dre, and now he's using it as a lens to explain to. some of his actions, like saying his diss towards Eminem was just another way to get back at Dre. Throwing shots at Eminem and beefing with Eminem, it was just me being upset with Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre can't out-rap me, so I just went at M, just because that's just how I get sometimes. If this was an isolated incident, then perhaps Dre would be able to let it go. But in actual fact, it's part of a larger pattern of behavior, which has defined and ultimately destroyed Dre's respect for the game. Because just like he went at M as a proxy for Dre, Game has also sought to undermine Kendrick in ways that land somewhere between yeah, jealousy do. and anger over how he feels Dre is overlooked. Saluted on Black Boy Fly by Kendrick as a rapper he'd always looked up to, Game was there when the torch was passed to k out by Snoop. Over the years, Kendrick collaborated with the game on several tracks, and by all accounts, it looked like these two West Coast artists were on good terms. But what was notable is that at every turn, whether in the spirit of competitiveness or jealousy, it's as though the game has tried to downplay Kendrick's skills. Can't nobody yeah. count that I'll rap game. Kendrick, my Kendrick do it. I love that death. I flew past Kendrick when I was on foot in a Range Rover and showed him how to do it. Don't play with game name. Hardest in confident rapping lyricist me. Once again, the game that's wild statement, bro. This nigga game, bro. I, I, did, I didn't see why he's kind of like in a mixed bag all the time. Like, as I hear like niggas don't like that nigga, bro. Then I hear niggas do like that nigga. So I, I guess like, I, I see why. Like, I don't listen to his music very often. Like, I got a few songs with a few of his features. And like, I got a few off the Red album. But like, um, like the I think the second one. But um, that's about it. Like, I don't really sit here and listen to the game. But it's like people really do out there and they, they have big opinions on the game. And I'm just like, I never understood why, but I kind of do now. He's, he's trying to everywhere, bro. He's like, I don't know. Game is let liquor like. do the talking and fostered a potential problem with a fellow time. protege of Dre. And while this may have potentially contributed to Dre's gradual distancing from the game, what really didn't help his case was refusing to stand by the West Coast when it came to the Kendrick and Drake beef. While Dre was out there providing the intro to Not Like Us, the game actively took Drake's side. This isn't anything new though, because previously the game sat on the fence and claimed that Drake didn't take shots at Kendrick on their collab track 100. Yeah, I didn't feel like that, and if I did, if I did, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put a song out. Like I said, Kendrick's my brother. Um, I love him too. But if Drake was subliminal, on slick, yeah, he's slick with that. Again, yeah, like he wanted the best that ever do it. So <laughs> it's hip hop. Now, no one is saying that the game can't openly support Drake, but with subliminal shots this obvious, it does raise some eyebrows. But things go further, as recently the game basically initiated himself into Drizzy's OVO camp when at the height of the K-Dot beef, he took to IG and played Drake's enemy from 2015 alongside the caption, too many fake rappers I gotta pretend I liked. Later, he admitted that it came down to the fact that he saw Drake as his brother. However, some wondered if he was still so embittered towards Dre and the Aftermath camp that he was now renouncing his Compton roots. And when he wasn't in attendance at Kendrick's pop-out show that essentially unified the West Coast, people started asking questions. My, my DMs and all on these log sites and whatnot, talking about the West Coast ain't with you and you ain't this and you ain't that and you side with this. As far as my relationship with Drake, Drake is my brother. My loyalty is with mother is loyal to me. Don't put my name in unless you hear me say it. Anybody that know me know I ain't got no mother problem saying how I feel about no and Drake, that's my mother brother. And Kendrick, that's the homie, he know what it is. Despite Game's attempts to control his narrative, it's easy to see why Dre no longer respects him. From dissing nearly every major rapper associated with Aftermath, along with his unpredictable nature, Dre has learned that dealing with the game comes with a whole host of potential hazards, with disloyalty and ungratefulness being chief among them. And honestly, we don't blame him. So, why Dr. Dre never respected the game? So I'm kind of seeing a pattern with the game. He's playing a lot of them. He's playing a lot of games. Let's just say that. I just see why, uh, Ain't nobody really vibing with the boy too often. It, ma it makes a lot of sense. I, I, I see the potential harm he be doing. But, uh, I don't know, he seems like he's trying to be a better person, though. High key. Like, I'm, I'm not going to cap. It sounds like he's trying to be a better person by leaving that all that shit behind and moving out. And then everybody DM'd him, talking about, like, oh, hey, like, you ain't show up to the pop-out show. And he ain't trying to care about that shit, but, you know, you do just a little bit.